out there, my brothers and sisters in Yeshua. May the all may we give all honor and glory to our Father. That's Daddy. Honor and glory goes to our King, our Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Himself. And we thank the Holy Spirit. We thank the Father for sending His Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, um, this video is triggered by um, something that I seen uh, while I was online, and it just hit me. And there's other things that I want to put on top of that too, as well. And by the end of this video, you will get the reality of the realness of the death of Christ and His suffering, and how serious He is. And how serious, how serious, how serious it will be when he comes. Hands down. How serious it will be. Many, many, many he will turn away. He said there will be gnashing, teeth, crying, mourning. Hysterically, because he would turn away people from him. People would see the truth. People would see that was they were indeed deceived by different denominations, different religions. I was on Google and I looked up. I typed in Yeshua. And when I typed in Yeshua, I looked at images and just going, scrolling down, just observing. And I seen one image where there was an, um, I'm not sure if he was Jewish, but it was an African-American descent man. And one side of his face was burnt. I mean, to his scalp, burnt disfigured as soon as I seen it it hit me when I seen how disfigured it was I thought about scripture on how scripture said how this disfigured Christ was as far as his suffering when he suffered and was punished and flogged and Nails and his hands and his feet pierced on his side, lashes and lashes for our sins. My brothers and sisters, get this in your mind. This physically happened to him. He was disfigured after. Yet one bone was not broken. Scripture said you couldn't even describe if you couldn't even describe or even sense if there was a human standing before you. Many of us has watched many of us many of us have watched Passion Passion of the Christ. Many of us have cried over Passion of the Christ to see how uh, um how much the quote unquote Jesus that was portrayed in Passion of Christ was tortured. My brothers and sisters, what you seen on Passion of the Christ? That was kids play. That was no comparison. No comparison to what had happened to Christ. Our Messiah suffered worse, disfigured. Have you ever seen anyone disfigured before? I mean, there's multiple murders throughout this world where people were burned to death. You get bodies that are thrown in the river to the point where they go out and take out the body and the skin just falls off the individual. There are certain people that they're burnt so bad that you don't even know if they are a human or they are an animal. 
The only way that they all, the only way that they end up identify them is by a uh, um uh bone records. As far as their dental records. Sometimes they can't even identify them to the point their body is decomposed. When scriptures speak, it speaks the hard truth to the point you would see yourself and you say, this is the truth. When scripture says lawlessness will increase, that is the truth. When scripture says men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boasters and proud, that is the truth. Prophecy fulfilled. So when scripture says Yeshua was disfig- disfigured to the point that you wouldn't even know if he was a human standing before you, that is the truth. You must take that to core. You must meditate on that, on how much our Messiah suffered for sin, suffered for you, suffered for the world, suffered for me. So you think in your mind when he comes Anyone who held on to sin and refused to repent, you think he will open his arms to receive them? No, he will kill them. Put yourself in his shoes. I can't put myself in his shoes because I'm unworthy to even come down from heaven to earth to die as an innocent person. I would have been guilty off jump. Put yourself in his shoes. You were sent by God. Loving God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. He is your everything. And he said to you, go down and die for these sinners. Loving God, you said, okay. You go down. You haven't done anything. You were innocent. You obeyed God. You loved God. You worshiped God. And to come down in this sinful and adulterous world where people betrayed you, people who you thought was your friend stabbed you in your back, you left your home where everyone loved you to come to this world. As Scripture says, as Christ was a man of many sorrows. Grieving every day, a man of many sorrows. Do you not know? A man of many sorrows means that he cried, he grieved almost every day. The things that we go through. He lost his cousin by beheading to the point where he left. He got a boat. He left in the middle of the water to go be alone by himself. You don't think that hurt him? He cried when one of his best friends died, Lazarus, but he rose him to death, rose him from the dead. People hated him and they killed him, persecuted him. Him for what? For nothing. Jealousy. He didn't do anything. But then he came to suffer. It wasn't easy. Or what he went through. He was in anguish. He was in great pain. So much distress that he asked his father. He said, can you take this cup away from me? But not my will. Your will. No matter what. He was wanting to please the Father unto death, being an example to us. He went through the pain. Not only was it physical hurt, but emotional. All of his friends left. He was by himself with his Father. You must understand what he had gone through. My brothers and sisters, you must put yourself in his shoes to see the emotional things that he had gone through. And then at the, on top of that, he had to suffer and die on the cross. He had to stand before worthless men, sinners beyond sinners, and watch them spit in his 
face a king. He had to watch them spit in his face, and they flogged, and they mocked. My brothers and sisters, to be real with you, many of you would have lashed at every single one of them, but Christ restrained himself. For him to be a king and for one to spit in his face, knowing that they are beneath him, God could have killed them right then and there. That's disrespectful beyond disrespect. But he stood there silent, innocent sheep. God's lamb on its way to the slaughter. He just stood there. He didn't say one peep. They spit in his face. They mocked him. They scoffed at him. They ridiculed him. They punched him, saying, prophesy this. Who punched you? My brothers and sisters, put yourself in Yeshua's shoes. Then they lashed him, disfigured, disrespectful, nailed him to the cross. He felt every bit of it. He paid your sins. All of these things that happened to him, it was supposed to happen to you because of your habitual lying, because of your habitual uh, uh, stealing. Because of your lust, because of your pride, because of your self-centeredness, because of your adulterous heart, you refuse to abide and stay with your wife or stay with your husband. Your eyes linger. Because of you, because of your wrongs, he died in your place. He didn't do anything. He was an innocent individual. He died for you. And you continue in your theft. You continue in your lies. You continue in your boisterous heart. Lovers of money. Proud. You sit in church and you yawn. You care nothing about God. You blaspheme his name. Use his name in vain. You say, oh, uh, I'm too busy sometimes. I just can't find enough time to pray. After all he done for you, stood there, didn't say anything, mocked, shame, ridiculed for you. My brothers and sisters, put yourself in his shoes. For you to come down to heaven and to do all this for someone and tell them to turn away from their sins, for them to follow you. To please God. And they continue in this sin that you have been tortured for. You have been ridiculed for. You were, they, spat, they spat in your face. Flogged you. Scoffed at you. Mocked at you. Knowing that you were king. Knowing that you were, knowing that you were above them. For you to come back to earth, seeking men that desires your heart. Will you get one, you get all, you get a majority that have not turned away from sin. So you say, what's the purpose of me dying? So I died in vain. So by me dying in vain, you laughed at me while while you were in this world. You didn't take what what happened to me seriously. Do you not know the pain that I went through? Do you not know the ridicule? Do you not know I had to hold myself back from lashing from the towards these people for what they done to me? To think when Christ comes here, He says many will come to me on that day, saying, "Lord." I want to see his face. 
many in sin have not repented, nor what Yeshua had went through, emotional suffering, a man of many sorrows. They haven't renounced their sins, yet they're coming up to him talking about Lord. Jesus said he will say, depart from me. That's the AKA, get out of my face. No more mercy. He says to repent. He said, I suffered because of you. I didn't do anything. Yet you hold on to your sin being selfish. But he was selfless when he was told, commanded by his father, to come down to die for sinners. Selfless, he had done this. Selfless, but you are selfish in holding on to your sins, knowing that your Messiah had died and suffered for you. Suffering trauma, emotional despair, a man of many sorrows. Yet he bore all of this on his shoulders just to give you a second chance. But you laugh, you mock, you scoff, you use his name in vain. You don't sanctify his name. Being a self selfish individual, you still hold on to your sins saying, what about me? What about this money? What about this business? What about this house? What about my family? What about myself? And Christ comes with the multitude of his angels. Having known what he went through, men who hold on to sin, women who hold on to sin, being deceived by the world, will attempt to approach the Almighty. With a smile on their face, Lord, Lord, he said, depart from me. I never knew you. You that work in iniquity. Basically saying, I came to save you, to give you an opportunity to be one with my Father. That's a disgrace. That's disrespectful. For him to do this for you, you don't change. But then you want him to receive you. You're right to be judged. You're right to be sent to the lake of fire. You're right to be killed and to be tortured because he took your place, but you didn't take his place as as far as being holy, as far as seeking his will. So you will die for your own sins as he has suffered. You will feel the torture that he has been tortured. You will be disfigured as he was disfigured, and he will allow it. My brothers and sisters, understand the reality of Yeshua's second coming. It's not a game. He's seeking people that will ride to ride and die for him, just as he has ride and he just like he has rode and died for us when he came. He's not seeking for people that's on the fence. Either you are for God or you are not. Either you are for Christ or keep it moving. That's what he's looking for. He's saying, repent. Turn away from your sins. I have paid the price. Anyone who wants to, anyone who wants salvation, come after me. Sit down and count the cost. If you cannot count the cost, keep it moving. On to the next. My brothers and sisters, it's not a game. Look around this world, all those who are deceived on the fence for the Lord, thinking that they will have, uh, they will gain access to the kingdom of heaven. Reality will hit when Yeshua comes with his angels. He suffered on earth. His father watched him suffer, and he held back himself. The angels who adore, love, and worship him, a multitude of mighty sherebrums, Sheriffs, angels, watch their Messiah suffer for you. They will kill you. You will die in your sins. 
because you refuse to come to him. It's not a game. God isn't desperate. Christ isn't desperate. He died for all those who were willing to lay their lives for him too, who were seeking eternal life as well, who no longer wanted the things of this world. Long-suffering he has been, but you're playing with God. Christ is not playing. At his second coming, it's no joke. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because you held on to your life. You didn't lose it. So for you not losing it, you will lose it when he comes back. More, there will be weeping, as he say, gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth because you have been deceived. You haven't taken Christ seriously. But reality will hit many. Reality will hit many. Reality will hit many. Take care.